coming up on episode 25 of The Fruck Show, I try a lemon sherbet drink. Pucker the mouth. We look at some seasonal Swedish products in your photos. But these, oh my god, the free flavours in here are And we debut a new segment created by Stuart, the master of music. <laughs> Welcome to The Fruck Show. Yes, hello everyone, my name is MJ, welcome to The Fruck Show, and as always, we will start off with the news. So the winner of the Swizzles Invent a Flavour competition has now been announced. It is, uh, so I think it's pretty good news really. Uh, I think it's probably the most interesting one. The winner was not my suggestion, the cola floats. Oof. Didn't even make it into the voting stage, so obviously it wasn't. It was actually the Great British Classic Chew Things, whatever it's called. Images on screen of uh, sort of a photoshopped image of the product on the conveyor belt. They're actually uh, going to start making it in early 2019 to be available later in the year. This is the product that contains flavours such as like strawberry trifle and apple pie and sticky toffee pudding. Um, so I'm really hoping that they actually stick to those flavours. For example, I'm hoping in like the strawberry trifle one. I hope that you can taste the strawberry as well as the custard and the cream. I think it's important that you can taste all the different flavours. They could just phone it in and make it like a vanilla st strawberry, for example, for that flavour. But we will see. Uh, I'm not too, too upset with this result. I think, like I said, I think it's probably the most interesting one out of the options that they chose. Of course, they should have chosen my cola float flavour, but there is a lot of injustice in the world. Remember that. So the first review of this episode is the Bar Limited Edition Sweet Shop Classics Sherbet Lemon. Really, really interested by this flavour. You might have seen our review of the Rhubarb and Custard Soda flavour, which is of course from the same range. Uh, I got this from a, a Halal Butcher actually, but I, I've heard that they're popping up in ghetto news agents everywhere. Such a brilliant idea. Love Bar, love the packaging. Really excited to try this. It's 69p, so I, uh, and it does say on here, full on flavour, low on sugar. So I'm guessing it'll be um, slightly more of a sweetener-y sweetener joke. Joke drink. <laughs> the, the smell is absolutely bang on, uh, Sherbet Lemon. Let's give it a go. Wow. Definitely does have a hint of a, like a sweetenery taste afterwards. And I think being a lemon drink, just a, just a lemon drink, albeit a lemon sherbet drink, uh, it doesn't have quite the same boldness as the rhubarb and custard one. That being said, they've captured the flavour very well. Uh, comparing it again to the rhubarb and custard, I wouldn't say they've captured it quite as well. But it is still really good. Very, very fizzy. Very frothy, like the other rhubarb and custard one. But yeah, sweet, crisp, tangy, refreshing. And it does pucker the mouth. Such a brilliant, brilliant idea for a range of drinks. Well done, bar. Absolutely smashed another one. I'm not the biggest fan of lemon in general. I uh, quite like it. I actually sort of prefer it more in savoury dishes, so I'm not the biggest fan of lemon sweets. Uh, but this is still really good and I find it very impressive. Maybe just if it had a, a yellow lid, maybe I'd be a bit happier. But I would give it four stars. On with the show. Quivia. So last time I asked you which commuter uh, ordered pizza to their train. Uh, I also said, I believe I gave it the clue that it was last year. Now a lot of people said it was Domino's and I think this may stem from the fact that like Lad Bible and other places like that have picked up like small story where lads have ordered Domino's to their train like commute. Stupid, stupid. I was actually talking about a much bigger news story. This was, this was massive. This was all over the internet and if you, if you Google it, it it comes up almost entirely with this. It's an Amtrak uh, train commuter uh, who got the train stopped, so they ordered uh, pizza, and it was a local pizza chain called Dom's. So it's actually Dom's. No one got it right. You all sort of chose the wrong one. And I know it's a bit unfair because, like, sort of, they both happened. But, no, this was the bigger one, guys. This was, this was the one that I was thinking about, yeah? So this time, how about an easier one? Or is it easy? You know? What's the most popular drink in the world? Here's a clue. I think my friend CC would be able to answer this one. 
let me know you'll have the weirdest, creepiest laugh anyone has ever recorded. But do leave your comments in the comments section. <laughs> So next review of the episode is Fransk Nougat. Now this is from Maribel. This is a Swedish product and this was, yeah, it's a bit of a Swedish fest this episode, isn't it? We've got a yellow sort of theme on the thumbnail and on this t-shirt. we got yellow, yellow, don't know what I'm saying, yellow drinks. Uh, and two mentions of Swedish products. So this was sent to me by Nikki Thompson. I actually uh, featured this in a Swedish food haul video, which might not quite be up yet, so we will see. But uh, they said they really liked this one. It looks like this. There's two fingers of it, and it's covered in dark chocolate, and it's nougat. Let's see what it's like. Oh, quite hard. Very hard. Mmm. It looks like that in the middle. Yuffie on my now. The dark chocolate is really, really good quality. Mmm. Oh wow. And at first, dark chocolate is very overpowering. But then, because the nougat is so chewy, it stays around for a while. Mmm. Wow. Yeah, this is like classic sort of traditional style nougat flavour. Sort of quite Swiss. Tastes a lot like Toblerone nougat. Chewy, nutty, bit of almond flavour maybe. Yeah, it's really tasty. If you like Toblerone, uh, and you like the chewy, sort of nutty nougat bit in Toblerone, I think you'd really like this. Chocolate tastes really high quality, and that new guy is very, very tasty indeed. Very sweet, quite pure, but I like that a lot. You can see the appeal. I'd give that a high four stars. On with the next segment. Pepping etiquette. Pepping, pepping etiquette. Pepping etiquette. Pepping. <laughs> I basically don't tip. Almost ever. I basically don't tip. Wow. I basically don't tip. Almost ever. I basically don't tip. Wow. Hi, Dave. Dave. I basically don't tip. Wow, amazing. Hi, Dave. Dave. I basically don't tip. That's amazing. I basically don't tip. Almost ever. I basically don't tip. Wow. I basically don't tip. Almost ever. I basically don't tip. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Yeah. I absolutely love Stuart for making that. So uh, there is going to be more skits like that in future episodes. In fact, the next one that we've got is absolutely hilarious. It's actually been stuck in my head all week because I saw it last week. Uh, anyway, guys. Enough of that noise, this is supposed to be a quick fire review. Fast, quick. This is Biscolata mini biscuits with a chocolate cream filling, one pound. Uh, this is Biscolata. It's uh, like a brand that is, I, I believe, available in Europe, but uh, now is being quite heavily distributed in the UK, uh, sort of in partnership with Bobby's. And Bobby's did actually send us this product, so thank you to Bobby's. Smells good. Sauce smells a little bit like a chocolate spread sort of situation. Got a nice rattle to it. Wow, bit of crunch. Bit of crunch. The texture's amazing on that. Oh, light, crispy, quite hollow in there actually, but it does have the cream in there. I like that it's got a lid so you don't have to eat the whole lot in one because it is quite a big tub there. Not an insignificant size at all. Yeah, what a cute idea. It does have printing on there, a little bit like cartoonies, but flavour wise it's not like cartoonies. Interesting. That filling's actually quite rich. Very deep with chocolate flavour, but still quite sweet. It tastes a lot like Nutella, but without the nut. So it tastes like a chocolate spread. I wonder if it's got palm oil. Mmm. Looks like it does have palm oil. Because that's all in the news at the moment, isn't it? Iceland's Christmas advert and whatnot. Yeah, that is tasty though. I would give that a very, very, very high three stars. I like the idea of it. It's got an incredible texture. The flavour's good. If the flavour was better, if that cream was maybe a hazelnut filling, I think it would actually be even better. Cool. Okay guys, so the Your Photos this week all come from Unicorn Ambassadors. So thanks again to Unicorn Ambassadors for sending us photos. They send us amazing photos. And I absolutely love these photos. These might be two of my favourite photos I've had. Because they're just interesting products. Before I show them though, if you want your photos featured, use hashtag the Fruck Show on Instagram. Follow us at Fruckgram. Yeah, use that hashtag and your, your photos will get featured here. I love receiving them guys, so please do do that. 
Right, so we've got poly vinta, poly vinta. So this is a winter flavour of poly. Now I don't think I did a review of the original polys that I bought. I think I just ate them. Because I did go to Sweden earlier in the year. If you check out our vlog channel, you can actually see our full adventures from Sweden. Let's have a look. Poly Food Review UK. I don't think I reviewed them. No, I didn't. I actually bought so I bought two flavours when I was over there. I bought normal poly, which was uh, I believe a mixture between dark chocolate and milk chocolate flavour. It's a uh, chocolate coating around what I can only describe as like a chewy nougat kind of toffee. Very uniquely flavoured. The, the, the flavouring of those original ones is sort of like a vanilla, uh, very lightly toffee sort of flavour. At first, I didn't know what to make of them, but the more I ate, the more Moorish they were, and I ended up, by the end of the bag, absolutely loving them. I think they're the kind of sweet that might be bad for fillings, because I sort of had to be careful chewing them, like, that I wasn't, like, pulling everywhere, because they were so, sort of, sticky and strong. But like I say, I really ended up liking them a hell of a lot. The other flavour I bought was Zoo, which had banana, uh, strawberry, and, uh, was it normal chocolate in there? I think. Uh, and they were amazing as well. Really enjoyed them. Bit sickly because they were sort of like white chocolatey based, but still really good. But these, oh my god, the three flavours in here are gingerbread, clementine, and Christmas fudge. I would absolutely love to try them. And I adore the packaging. It's so cute and it's so cool. Cloetta, the brand, and Polly, the brand. Brilliant brands. Fantastic. Next one, big brand everyone's heard of, obviously, Sprite. So they've got lemon, lime and cranberry as a nice festive edition, nice festive flavour. So for more finds like that, you can go over and check out Unicorn Ambassador's Instagram account. They are brilliant. Thank you for sending them in, guys. And if you want your photos featured here, use hashtag the frock show. Right, and that brings this episode, episode 25, a quarter of 100, to an end. Thank you very much for watching. What else do you want to see in the fracture? I hope you're enjoying the content still. Let me know in the comments below if that is the case. And we will see you next time.